All right, in this video, we're going to look at solving quadratic inequalities. All right, so the first problem we have, x squared minus 3x plus 36 is greater than or equal to 0. All right, so uh, first thing we want to do is we want to take this uh, quadratic, and we want to set it equal to 0 and find the zeros. All right, so that means we'll factor it. So we've got x, x, uh, minus 9, minus 4. So x minus 9 equals 0, or x minus 4 equals 0. And so x is equal to 9, or x equal 4. Okay, so it's assumed that you know how to do that part. Okay, because if you're at the quadratic inequalities, then you've, you've solved quadratic equations. All right, so... These are our zeros. So what we do here is we plot these on the number line. So I've got 4 and 9. And what that does is it splits this up into three regions. Okay, this, this one, this one, and this one. Now, what we want to do is we need to pick a number from each region. Okay, So here I'll choose x equal 3. Here I will choose uh, x equal 5. And here we'll choose x equal 10. And it makes no difference which numbers you pick. It's just that the number you choose here has to be less than 4, the number you choose here has to be between 4 and 9, and the number you choose here has to be larger than 9. Alright, so now what we do is we need to take each number and plug it back into our quadratic. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it into the one that's already factored. I mean, these are the same. Th this expression, this quadratic, is the same as this one. It's just this is factored. Okay, this is this quadratic factored. All right, so now for the x equal 3. So I have 3 minus 9 times 3 minus 4. Okay, and all I did is I took the 3 and I plugged it in for x here and here. Okay, so this is going to be negative 6 times negative 1, which equals 6, which is greater than 0. Okay, all right, so when we plug the 3 in, we got a number greater than 0, or we could say it's positive. Okay, so that means any number you choose from this region would, and plug, plugged into our quadratic would be positive. Okay, now let's plug the 5 in. So we have 5 minus 9 times 5 minus 4, which equals negative 4 times 1, which is negative 4, which is less than 0. So that means any number you choose from between 4 and 9 and plug into the quadratic is going to give you a negative answer. So anything in here would be negative. All right, so now let's look at the 10. So I've got 10. Oh, I've got 10 minus 9 times 10 minus 4, which is 1 times 6, which equals 6, which is positive. So any number larger than 9 that we would plug into the quadratic would be positive. All right, so let's look at this. We want to know when is this quadratic function greater than or equal to 0. Or another way to look at it, when is this quadratic function greater than 0? That just means when is it positive. Well, we can see that it's positive here, less than 4, and positive greater than 9. So that would be our solution. It's from negative infinity to 4, and we'll put a bracket on the 4 because it's or equal to 0, and the quadratic is 0 at 4, or 
we use the union symbol, from 9 to infinity. And we'll use the bracket here on the 9 because it can, because at 9 this is equal to 0. And so this would be our solution. Alright, so let's take a look at another one. Alright, so how about this one? Alright, so just like in the last problem, we're going to set the quadratic equal to 0. And we'll factor. So we've got 3x, 2x, and let's see, we've got 5, 2, plus, minus. So 3x minus 2 is equal to 0, or 2x plus 5 is equal to 0. So 3x equals 2, x equals 2 thirds. Here we have 2x equals negative 5, x equal negative 5 halves. And once again, we'll draw our number line and plot our points on the number line. So I've got negative 5 halves, I've got 2 thirds, and this breaks it up into the three regions. All right, so here we need to choose a number less than negative 5 halves. Well, negative 5 halves is what? Negative 2.5. So we'll choose x equal negative 3. Here we can choose x equals 0. And here we'll choose x equal 1. All right, so now I need to take each of these numbers, plug it back in. Okay, I can plug it into this one or I can plug it into this one. I just think it's easier to plug it into the one that's already factored. So let's plug the negative 3 into here. And so that's going to be, let's see, let me change the color. So that's going to be 3 times negative 3 minus 2 times 2 times negative 3 plus 5. Okay, so let's look at this. That's going to be negative 9 minus 2, which is negative 11, times, and then negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1, which that equals 11, which is greater than 0. So that means in this region, everything's positive. And then I plug the 0 in. I've got 3 times 0 minus 2 times 2 times 0 plus 5, which that's going to give me negative 2 times 5, which is negative 10, which is less than 0. So that means everything in this region is negative. So now let's plug in the 1. So I've got 3 times 1 minus 2 times 2 times 1 plus 5 which equals, that's going to be 1 times 7, which is 7, which is greater than 0. So that means everything in this region is positive. So I want to know when is this quadratic function less than 0, or when is it negative? And you can see that would be in this region here. Okay, so my solution would be everything from negative 5 halves to 2 thirds. And I would have parentheses on them because it's not equal to 0. Okay, so the endpoints here, they would not be included. And so this would be our answer. Alright, so let's take a look at this problem. Here, we, we're going to take the 4x cubed plus 18x squared minus y minus 2, set it equal to 0. Okay, so here we're going to do factor by grouping, so I'll split it down the middle. That's not supposed to be 18, that should be 8. Alright, so we split it down the middle. So for this one, I can factor out a 4x squared, and that leaves me with um, x plus 2. 
and so here I'll factor out a negative one and that'll and that'll leave me with well I'm sorry the problem's written wrong that should be an X and so that would make this an X and so this would be X plus 2 and then I can factor out an X plus 2 X plus 2 and that leaves me with 4x squared minus 1 equals 0. And so here I get x plus 2 equals 0. Or, uh, let's see, that would be 4x squared minus 1 equals 0. So here I get x equal negative 2. And then here I can use the square root property. I can isolate my x squared term, so move the 1 over. So that's 4x squared equals 1, divide by 4, x squared equals 1 fourth. And then the square root property, x is equal to plus or minus 1 half. All right, now let's draw our number line and let's plot our numbers on there. So I've got, let's see, negative 2, I've got negative 1 half, and I've got one half. Okay, so this breaks up. This time we've got four regions. Okay, and then I'm going to choose a number from each region. And so I'll choose x equal negative three, x equal, I could choose negative one, and then here I can choose x equal. 0 and x equal 1. <clears throat> so now I need to plug each one back into my polynomial. And I'm going to plug it into this one that's already factored. Okay, it makes, it makes no difference if you plug it into this one or this one up here. Okay, Or if you wanted to, you could plug it into this one, but this one will be the easiest. All right. So let's do the negative 3. So I've got negative 3 plus 2 times 4 times negative 3 squared minus 1. And that's going to be negative 1 times, and then that's going to give me uh, 9 and 4 is 36. Okay, that's 36 uh, minus 1 is 35, which is negative 35 which is less than 0. Okay. Now let me show you something here. <clears throat> Alright, let's do the negative 1. So I've got negative 1 plus 2 times 4 times negative 1 squared minus 1. Alright, so, so look at this. I don't really care what the exact answer is. Okay, you see how I plugged it in and got these numbers here? All I care about is is this positive or negative. Well, look at this. If I do negative 1 plus 2, that's going to be a positive number times, and then 4 times 1 is 4 minus 1. That's a positive number also. And so my answer, a positive times a positive, is positive. See, that's all I really care about. So I know here that's positive and from the first one that's less than zero so we can see that's negative okay so you know if you need to go ahead and plug the number in for x evaluate it and get the number then that's fine but if you can do this well then just do that it's a little it's it's a little quicker <coughs> now let's try the zero so i've got zero plus two times four times zero squared minus one so look what I have here. This is positive. This is going to be negative times a negative, which is a negative. And so that means everything in this region is negative. Now let's plug the 1 in. So I've got 1 plus 2 times 4 times 1 squared minus 1. So this is going to be positive. This is going to be positive. And so my answer, positive times a positive, is positive. So that means everything in this region is positive. 
All right, so let me move this up a little bit. <clears throat> All right, so what do we want to know? We want to know when is this positive? When is it greater than zero? Well, it's positive here and here. Okay, so my solution is going to be negative 2 to negative 1 half. Okay, and we have parentheses because it's not or equal to, or one half to positive infinity, and this would be our solution. All right, so sorry if I sorry about the little mess up there on the end, on the last problem. Uh, hope the video helped. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, thanks.